sing it out. I was buried. I was buried beneath. Come on, it's going to clap. My shame. Just like that. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb. Let's keep that up. I was breathing. I was breathing, but I was not alive. On my failures, I tried to hide. It was my turn till I met you. All right, we need your help on this part. You called. You called my name. Let's hear it out. Here we go. And I about where God has brought us. And so that's just an amazing thing to celebrate this morning. So I invite you to sing it out. Here we go. I need a rescue. I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healer. Now you're Fire and wind, come and do it again. 
up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you will move. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, Open up your arms and sing it. Holy Spirit, come rest on us. You're all we want. You're all we want. Yeah. Spirit, come rest on us. You're all you're all we want today and that is our cry of praise this morning so we just pray that you remain in this room throughout the remainder of the service we ask that your spirit touch hearts today heavenly father there's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope Your presence, Lord. Come on, we've tasted and seen every voice this morning. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. Where my heart becomes free, my shame is undone. It's in your presence. In your presence, Lord. Come on, every voice around the room, let this speak a cry of praise today. Sing it out, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts 
that's long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. By your presence, Lord. Come on, let's sing that verse out again. There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. It's your I live in hope. In your presence. Lord. Come on, we've tasted and we want more this morning. Sing it out together. And I've tasted. And of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is under Shame is undone in your presence, Lord You're welcome here Holy Spirit, you are welcome and fill the animals your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your praise come on sing that out again Holy Spirit you are welcome come flood this place and fill together. Let us become more aware. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of Come on, sing that out all you've got. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us Come on, that's our prayer this morning to experience him. One more time, let us. And let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience your glory. And hold. Father, we 
just come before you today. We come before you humbly acknowledging that we need you, God. For we have tasted and seen who you are. And we just ask today that your Holy Spirit comes in the room. That is our prayer, God. That your Holy Spirit comes and brings strength. That it comes and brings boldness. God, for we need you, God. We cannot do it on our own. But it's through you. So we just sing this today. Come on, let us become. Here we go. Let's become more aware of your presence. Let us experience how we need you, God. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. Sing that chorus out one more time. service continues, that you just continue to move in the lives and in the hearts of the people in this room. We give you thanks and praise for what you are doing here today, and it's in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much for worshiping. the series called Unsure. We're in the middle of it talking about faith doubts, dealing with the things that we struggle with in our faith. And I've covered so much stuff. Uh, Ever since Easter is when we began this, I talked about uh, Thomas and his lack of faith, but that God met him at his lack of faith and he was changed. He was transformed by the power of God. And he went on to change the world. Uh, talked about doubting the goodness of God. That's one reason why we maybe doubt have faith in, in God. We doubt his goodness. Uh, another thing I talked about was doubting that God could use us, doubting that we could ever be used by God because of our past and because of our history. Last week, I hit a one that kind of touched close to home, and that is doubting. Uh, we have doubt because we've been hurt by Christians. Uh, the people that are supposed to love us the most and be most gracious sometimes just blow it and they aren't there. Uh, so I talked about that, that last week. Uh, today is probably going to be one of the most challenging messages to preach you. I know what you're saying. Well, last week was pretty hard. What's going to be hard about today? Well, hard today is I'm talking about unsure when deceived. Unsure when we're deceived. The reality is to all of us at some point in our life, we follow the wrong narrative. Sometimes we buy in to what is not true. And when that happens, when we come to those places that we, we falter or we fail to follow truth, we are then in the category of deceived. We've all been deceived. We've been deceived by people. We've been deceived by situations. We've been deceived by coworkers. We've been deceived by different things and places in our lives. It's just a reality. Sometimes in life, we just fall and we fail, and we get deceived. But at the root of the deception, at the very root of it, at the very base foundation of it, there is one to blame. And it is the very real enemy of our soul known as Satan, the devil, Lucifer, Beelzebub, Diablo, whatever you call him, 
That is who he is. At the very root of everything that we are, there's a real enemy. Just like in every conflict, there is an enemy. There is a very real enemy of our soul known as Satan. And Satan's whole plot from the beginning of time, from the beginning of creation, was to deceive, to deter, to destroy, and to shake us up in our faith. This is a very real enemy of our soul. Do you guys realize, according to a Gallup poll, that 90% of Americans, talking about America only, 90% of Americans claim that there is a God. They believe in God. 90%. Do you realize the same 90% that say they believe in God, only 60% of them believe in Satan? See the contrast here. 90% of the 90, only only two-thirds believe there is a very real individual known as Satan. And of that in the Christian church, just talking about Christians, talking about you and me in the church, do you realize that in the church only 35% of people say that there is Satan? And only 35% of the people say that there is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost? It's interesting that if anyone is being deceived, unfortunately, it's us. Hello? The church. We're falling for a lie that there's really not this Satan out there. And why is that? Well, here's why. Because if we're being real, the depictions of Jesus in our world, or, I'm, I'm sorry, of Satan in our world today are just absolutely silly. They're just silly depictions about who Satan is. So here's what he really looks like. He's attractive. That's why we're lured to him. It's why we're drawn to his beauty. In fact, the scripture says he was the most beautiful of all the archangels. He was glorious in his own creation and what God created in him. This is why sometimes we get deceived is because we believe that if it's ugly, we'll stay away. But if it's beautiful, we draw or drawn to it. And this is the exact actions of Satan. See, understand this. God, big G, is God of light. The God of darkness, little g, is Satan himself. God is truth. Satan is absolutely the father of lies. Jesus came to bring us life and bring it to the abundance that uh, more abundantly than we could ever imagine. But the Satan, the thief, comes to steal, to kill, and what? Destroy everything and everyone in his place. Remember this, when you have conflict, and we have a lot of conflict in our world today, remember when there's conflict, we can blame a party, but at the very root, it's Satan. It's evil in the world working with and through humans. Do you hear that? It's not your spouse. It's not your mother-in-law. It's not your boss. It's not your co-workers. No, no, no. Satan is at the root of the conflict in our world today. And when I preach today, I'm going to get excited. I'm going to be a little passionate today because understand this, church. If we don't see him working, we will fall for his lies. We will be deceived. And we will go down the worldly way, the cultural way, because why? It's the path of least resistance. You know what? Uh, everybody deserves a chance. Listen, at the root of everything that conflict is going on in the world today, there is a real enemy out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He hates every single human on the planet. And I'll tell you why in just a moment. Because see, he has a history. There is, in the scriptures, we see where he came from. We see why he is the way he is, and we see his agenda that is being promoted. I showed this video, video a little while back. Check this out. This gives a very cool, concise depiction of who Satan is, where he came from, and what he's out to do. Check this out. Scripture teaches us that Satan wasn't always the bad one. In fact, years and years and years ago, Satan was actually an angel, one of God's best and most beautiful angels known as Lucifer, or often called the morning star. What happened? Satan, in his beauty, became jealous of God and wanted to be like God. Instead of like Jesus, who said, 
Father, thy will be done. Lucifer, this morning star, the beautiful angel said, I will, I will, I will. Five times in scripture, we see this angel wanting to be like God. Here's the account. It's told in Isaiah chapter 14, starting in verse 12. Scripture says this, how you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. And God said, no, you won't. No one can ever be like me. And when this beautiful angel said, I will be like you, God, God cast him out of heaven and a third of the angels followed him. Most believe these became the demons today. Revelation 12 gives us this account, starting in verse seven, eight, and nine. The Bible says this, and there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. Verse 9 says the great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. When Lucifer said, I will be like God, God said, no, you won't. There is none other like me. He was cast down to the earth, and now we have this force of darkness to deal with. His name is Satan, and his angels became the demons. It's very important that we understand that the reality of this world, there is good and there is evil. There is God and there is Satan. You cannot have good if there is not evil. You cannot have evil if there is not good. That is exactly the contrast of what we live in. So if we are to say there is a God, we have to say there also is a devil. There also is Satan. And the reality is in the, in the years in the past, this was not even arguable. This was not even up for debate. This was the facts. The scripture says there is a very real enemy of our soul known as Satan. But in our world today, we have as a whole been deceived to believe that there can be God but no devil. And that's absolutely not true. Absolutely not true. There is a very real enemy and he is a deceiver of our life. In fact, here's what uh, John 8, 44, if you have your Bibles, turn there with me. John 8, 44, it says, he, the devil, Satan, was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native tongue. It's the only thing he knows. For he is a liar and he is what? The father of... He is the father of... Say it with me, guys. This is the reality and the heaviness of this world is there is darkness and there is light. It's always easy to preach about light, but we forget there is a very real enemy who wants to destroy everything about you. Bow your heads with me today. Father God, help me today to be able to convey and communicate to the best of my ability the reality of who this is, this dark, this dark person, this dark entity that tries to invade our life and tries to destroy us. Help me, God, to be able to convey it concisely, precisely, and only what you will. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Understand this today, that when the devil talks, he lies. When he speaks, he can never tell truth. He only speaks lies. Uh, it started all the way back in Genesis. It started back with Adam and with Eve. Not just with Eve. I'm not going to say that at all because the Bible says that while Eve was there, Adam was with her as well. It isn't like she did it and then drug him along. They both were there when the sin came into the garden. Here's what Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. This is God. It says, it says, the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden and work and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded man, you are free. How are you? You are what? 
Free. Freedom. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, for when you eat it, when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Understand this, that at the very beginning, God says very specifically, listen, you can have anything you want, you just can't have that. You can have anything you want, eat freely as much as you want, anywhere you want, but you can't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And from that very point, let me tell you something, from that very point, Satan began the attack on humanity because it was at that point that Satan began to say, I will attack God's authority. And at the very root of what Satan is doing, he is attacking the authority of who God is. It's, it's interesting that, that God, when he, or that Satan, when he went to Adam and Eve, he didn't attack their insecurity. He didn't attack their fact that they were, had nothing on. He didn't attack any of that stuff. He attacks the authority of of who and what God says. From the very beginning, Satan had that out for God because as we learn in the video, Satan was cast out of heaven because he said, I will, and God said, no, you will not. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you two ways that God, or that, I'm sorry about that, that Satan attacks God's authority. Two ways. If you have your notes, write these down because it's very, very important about being deceived in our world today. First off, the deceiver questioned God's word. He puts first in the question of God's word. Here's what it says in Genesis 3.1. It says, he, the serpent, said to the woman, did God really say? Did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Did God really say? Huh. I don't know if God really said that. He started to attack and put seeds of doubt inside of their minds and their hearts. And some, that's what God does in our world today. He says, is the Bible really real? I mean, surely you're smarter than that. Surely you have a little more common sense than, than to believe that the Bible written thousands of years ago applies to you today. Surely you're too smart to believe any of that stuff. That's for your grandparents. They believe that, but not you. You're smarter than that. You're more intelligent than they are, right? He attacks, he makes us question God's authority. Well, you know, did God really mean that you shouldn't do that? I mean, come on, what's the harm? No harm, no foul. Go ahead, enjoy. It's fine. You'll be fine. Yeah, I get it. Other people can't handle that. They can't handle smoking pot. They can't handle drinking. But you can. You got it all together. You can handle it. Go enjoy. He makes us question God's word and who and what God says. And he begins to twist and distort what God says. So the enemy goes to Eve and says, hey, uh, did God really say, did God really say uh, that you can eat from any tree? And that's not what God said. God said, eat freely from trees, but you cannot eat from one. And here's what he says. He says, the woman said to the serpent, no, we, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but she left out even a key word. You can eat from any tree freely except one. And at that point in time, there began this kind of disobedience to who God was. And that was, well, I'm given sort of truth, but not the whole truth. Satan made Eve at that point question that God was holding something out on them. Eve, Adam and Eve, God was holding out on them. There's something that God knows that he doesn't want you to know. And so he begins to make us question. This is what happens in our world today. When I speak the word scripture to this in Psalms, it says... For you know me in my for you knew me in my mother's womb. You shaped me, you formed me. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. When I speak those words in our world today, they get twisted and deceived. They get distorted into not truth. They get they get tore apart because why? Are you really fearfully and wonderfully made? Have you seen you? 
Have you looked in the mirror and saw this? Fearfully and wonderfully made, really? With your mind the way it is, with your light the way it is, really? This is fearfully and wonderfully made. Understand this. The enemy is always out to steal, kill, and destroy no matter what the cost. And he will distort anything that God says about you, even the smallest of notions, which leads to number two. Not only does he deceive us to make us question God's word, but secondly, the deceiver twists God's word and does not, does not give the fullness of God's word. Here's what he says in Genesis 4 or 5. He says, you will not certainly die. I mean, so here's God. God says, listen, if you do it, you're going to die. And Satan comes along and says, nah, you're not going to die. He's just, he's just pulling your leg. He makes us and he twists the word of God. He says, he says, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be what? Like God. You will be like him. And from that point in history, from that moment, mankind has believed. You know why? The devil's projecting here. He's projecting. What did he want back when he was in the heavens? He wanted to be like God. He wanted the authority in the place of God. He's projecting everything he wants onto you because he knows it destroyed him and it's going to destroy you. This is the attack of the enemy to deceive us into the lies that he says. He says, you will be like God and you'll know the good and evil. He doesn't want you on level playing fields with him. So God's holding out to you. So you better do something about it. And what is so crucial to understand that at that moment in time, Adam and Eve were like God. They were the most like God ever created. Because it was God who said, let us make men and women in our own image, in our image than our likeness. They were the most like God. They were more like God than Satan could ever imagine because they were made in the very image of God. So he's out to twist. He's out to question. He's out to deceive. If I heard something, and if in the middle of the night someone came into your house and was looking to steal from you or looking to harm your family, uh, you have options. One option is you go back to sleep. Not too many people are going to do that. Another option is you're going to send your spouse out after them, right? Uh, the other option is you band together and you fight. And you fight for what's yours. You fight and you defend and you, you make sure that what is yours is kept safe. You turn into something you never knew. You turn into Rocky, Rambo, Terminator, all combined into one. And you go down the hall and you become something you never became before. Because why? Life is at stake and we must fight for life. Fight for survival. The Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when the thief comes in, he does not come in through the front door. He comes in through the back door. He comes in the side window. He comes in through the most places that are most vulnerable to him getting all the way in. Hear me today, church. We have an enemy in the house. His name is Satan, and he's deceived many of us to believe lies that are absolutely not true. We have believed the lie for far too long. Sarah, Sarah, whatever it will be, will be. We believe the lie far too long that there is no difference between right and wrong. There is right and there is wrong. There is evil and there is good. There is God and there is Satan. And you, every single one of us, you, me, every one of us, we will choose which one we will follow. We will either follow the narrative and the agenda that leads us to God, or we follow the narrative and agenda that leads us to death. There's an enemy in our house. How do we fight him? We fight him through Ephesians chapter 6. We put on the full armor of God. 
We put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the shoes fitted with the gospel of readiness. And then we also do this. We fight with our sword. We fight with our sword. We fight with the word of God, the sword of God. We fight with knowing what God says about me, about my situation, about my place. Everything you face in life, everything is found in here. Every obstacle, every temptation, every cultural divide, everything, what the world is trying to figure out answers to, I've already found. Hello? Guys, we got to get this. This is not a woke sermon. This is not a political sermon. This is a biblical sermon that you must hear. If we don't wake up, sleeping church, if we don't wake up, we're going to lose our kids to this world and the madness that's coming out. That deserves a hand clap of praise right there because that's truth. We are leaving. We are leaving our generations to die in a place that have been deceived by lies of the enemy. The lie that says you are God and you can choose what you want to do. You are God. You know better. That orientation you were born with, no, 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 you know better. You can choose. And we're allowing our kids to go down a path. Trust me, trauma is real. I'm not negating trauma, but at the very root, it is deception. It is the thief to come to steal, kill, and destroy generations to come. This is not an easy message to preach because so many in our church have fallen for the lie that it's okay, let them choose. And then we have girls and boys that mutilate their body and they are, they are doing, making decisions at very young ages that they regret when they get older. In fact, new study came out, you realize this, of transgender, of transgender, 78%, 78% of those that had the surgery regret it 10 years later. Now, what can they do? They will always struggle with that in their life. We love, we care, we're there. But hear me when I say, the Bible says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Therefore, let's figure out why I'm not happy or content with how God made me. Let's ask the questions. Let's deal with the heart and the soul, the soul that is suffering inside them. Instead of turning to surgery, instead of turning to, to pills and drugs to try to fix them. Listen, God has in this word everything you need, everything you need. It does not matter what you're going through. It does not matter what you face. I'm here to tell you, God's word is true and it's sound. It's solid. Even in our crazy world, even in a world that says you're a mess. You're worthless. Even in a world that says, oh, you made that mistake. Oh, you'll carry that with you the rest of your life. I'm here to tell you there is healing in God's word. There is deliverance in God's word. There is, there is cultural answers found in God's word. What young people are looking for, what young people are looking for today is truth. Not, well, sort of maybe. They're not looking for grace. They're looking for absolute truth. What does this really say? This is absolute truth. Young people, this is your compass. Not what's going on in TikTok, not what's going on in social media, not what's happening at college universities. Let me tell you something, irregardless of that, this is truth. This is solid foundation. When the world is in chaos and when the world is on fire, let me tell you something, this will stand. This will never fail. God's word will be there from the very end of time. Jesus himself 
being the son of God. The son of God was in the desert for 40, year, for 40 days and 40 nights, fasting, seeking God. Satan himself comes to him and tempts him three different times. The first time he comes to him, he's really hungry. He says, hey, Jesus, turn these rocks into bread and feed yourself. And Jesus says, for it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that comes from God. The second temptation that comes around, he takes him to the cliff. Satan takes Jesus to a cliff, says, throw yourself off because it says, and Satan quotes scripture here. So it proves that he knows scripture and he's going to use it to twist and deceive you. He says to Satan, he says, because the word says that you can throw yourself down and your heel won't even strike to the side of the cliff, that the angels will come and save you. And Jesus looks at Satan and says, for it is written, do not test the Lord your God. The last temptation Satan takes him to the top of a mountain. He shows him all the cities around. And he says, bow down and worship me, Jesus, and I'll have all these nations in the palm of your hand. They will worship you, which just shows you that Satan had authority over the nations, everybody. He has authority over nations. You all hear that? You have authority over nations. If he didn't say, he didn't have so, he wouldn't have said, I'll make them worship you. And this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, get away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord God only and him alone. And at that point, it says that Satan left and the angel came and ministered to Jesus. You can only fight Satan. You can only fight the devil if this is in you. If it ain't in you, you can't fight him. If you don't know this, you can't stand when he comes attacking you and attacking your family. He can't, if you don't have it in you, a daily diet of his word, you will miss it every single time. That's why it's so important to have a Bible. You version on your, on your phone is, is great. It's a great thing. I, I enjoy it for quick access, but nothing beats this right here. This is the word of God, man. This is my, this is my note taker. This is my highlighter. This is my, put it in my, inside myself. I like a physical version of it. Uh, the word of God is living and active. Put it inside of you. The word, the sword of the spirit. Listen, the very first day of the week, we worship God. The very first of the year, every year, we set aside time to fast and seek God. The very first of our finances we take and we set aside for God. Everything we do is set up to not be deceived by the enemy. The word of God convicts, it directs, it comforts, it encourages, it equips. It reminds us about who God is and it helps us through the deepest, darkest struggles of our life. Listen, this is you today. Here's what God's word says to you. If you're depressed today, if you're feeling sadness, here's what scripture says. It says, why so downcast, O oh my soul? I put my hope in the living God. If your family's under attack today, it says this, no weapon formed against will prosper. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You can't go on, you're weary, you're discouraged. Here's what it says, I will not, I will not grow weary in doing good for in the proper season at the right time, I will reap a harvest of righteousness if I do not give up. The doctor calls and gives you a diagnosis that's hard. You say, I believe that all things are possible with God and that he can heal any situation. Man, this is all word of God, all scripture quotes. Don't know what to do, don't know where to go, Trust in the Lord with all your, heart, all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. This is the word of God. You feel ashamed of what you did? Feel ashamed of your past and your history or where you're at? It says there is therefore now no condemnation, no guilt, no shame for those in Christ Jesus. This is the power of God's word. It frees us, it directs us, it heals us. It keeps us from being deceived by Satan. 
It's not culturally popular. It's, it is not culturally acceptable to say, I believe the word of God is true from front page to back and everything in it I will do my best to abide by, by the Holy Ghost help. And when I am deceived and when I am lost, I will recognize it is not them. It is the enemy at work in the world today. And I will rebuke the enemy from my family. I will rebuke the enemy that tries to devour my household. I will rebuke the enemy over my mind. I will rebuke the enemy that tries to come into my heart. I will stand in the Holy Ghost power because he has delivered me. And my God is bigger than any God in this world. There's nothing too great. There's nothing too that is too powerful that he cannot do. So therefore, I will stand on God's word. And when the world calls you a bigot, a racist, intolerable, fascist, they'll call you all that. Just know this called Jesus the exact same things and he was the son of God who gave his life for the world truth truth is always always steady when found in God's word I don't stand on my words up here today I don't stand on my principles of what my political affiliation is I have my I have my thoughts, but I refrain from being political in this platform, but I will not refrain from being biblical in this platform. The Bible is the only truth that this will save this chaotic world. And it begins with us as a church. Father God, help us today this hard word that's hard to preach, God, because if we're being honest today, we've all been deceived. We've all questioned your word at one point or the other. And God, honestly, we've all allowed God's, your word to be twisted and distorted to not be true. But Lord, it is your word, it is your presence that we stand upon today. And when we stand in this world and when we stand up against the agendas and the, uh, the propaganda of the world and when we stand against cultural, uh, the cultural stream that's, that's, that's forcefully going down one direction or one, uh, one avenue, God, and we go against the avenue, we go against the stream, God, when that time comes, we feel very, very alone. We're afraid at times of speaking truth. We're afraid because we'll be called intolerant. We'll be called some other names that are just names. And we miss the reality that this world, more than anything, needs to have the veil pulled back off their eyes to see the destruction that's taking place is caused by a very real enemy known as Satan. I pray that this week, God, you would open up our eyes to see the enemy at work in our workplace or, God, in our home life or with our kids. God, the TVs they watch, the social media that they're engaged in. God, the, 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 uh, the engagement with their friends, whatever it is, God, may we see that the enemy is at work and we have to set a standard and we have to pray and we have to seek you, God. We're not alone in this battle. For God, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against the principalities of the air, but God, we wrestle against the dark dark forces of this world. God, we wrestle against those things we cannot see. And if we don't see it, if we don't acknowledge it, it will consume, it will take over, and it will destroy everything and everyone we love, God. Everyone we love. So we must open up our eyes. We must wake up and see that the enemy is at work, and we must call upon the one, the one, the only one who walks with us through the battles of life to put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and to take up the sword of the Spirit and fight the good fight. God, help us. 
Help us to remember that when we walk through those places, we are never alone, for you are always and forever with us, God. When I walk through deep waters, I know that you will be with me. When I'm standing in fire, I will not be overcome. Through the valley of shadow, I will not fear. everything that you have worked hard and long time for. And I'm here to tell you, you're not alone in your battle. You're not alone in your journey. You're not alone whenever it feels like uh, you, when it feels like you're the only one standing, when culturally it seems like everybody's going the opposite direction. Let me tell you something. You're not alone. He is with you. He is for you. And if God is for you, no one or nothing can be against you. That means in your workplace, that means uh, in your health, that means in your, in your, with your spouse, with your family, that means in anything and everything you come up against. He is with you and for you. Yeah. Yeah. All you have to do is acknowledge he's there and ask him for strength, ask him for help, ask him, God, where do I stand in this? So can I just do this? Can I just pray? If you need prayer for your family, prayer for your job, prayer for your, your home life, or for whatever it is you need prayer for, and you feel like you're just kind of, you don't know where to stand, or maybe you're standing and it kind of feels very tense, and it feels like, oh my gosh, I might die here. You just might, but you won't die alone, because he's always with you. 
If you need that prayer today, I'm going to ask you to do something that I don't always do. I want you to lift your hands all across this place. If you're in the middle of a battle today, you're in the middle of a struggle today, a very real enemy is coming at you and coming against you. Right there, would you just raise your hand right there where you're at? Hands up all over. Father God, I pray that, Lord, you would just move upon those lives. Help remind us every day that we are never alone in this battle. Though it may say dark, though it may seem grim, though it may seem like sometimes we're going to give in and just fail all the way, God, we are never alone. So God, I pray, I pray that you will just strengthen, you will just help, and you will just watch over each and every person here today. Let them know that God, when they go through the darkness, the valleys, the painful places, you're always there. And when the enemy comes, and when the enemy knocks, when the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, we will stand up and we will fight. We won't fight in our own strength. We will fight in the power and the presence of God. For we are never, ever alone. So God, touch each one of those lives. Let them know they are never alone. Let's sing this part right here. You are my strength. You are my defender. You're my refuge in the storm. And through these trials, you've always been faithful. You bring healing to Help us to not be deceived by the enemy. Help us to see your light in a very dark world. Guide and direct us today. God, keep us in your hands. Thank you for never leaving us alone. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you guys. Go in Jesus' name.